Welcome to our The China Briefing program, where we dive into the day's most intriguing stories with a touch of light-hearted commentary. First up, TikTok and its parent company ByteDance are throwing down the legal gauntlet against the US government. They're challenging a new law that could either force them to sell the app or say goodbye to their American audience. They argue it's a bit of a gag order on free speech and a kick in the teeth for the small businesses and creators who thrive on the platform. Meanwhile, over in the courtroom drama department, former US President Donald Trump finds himself with a bit more breathing room as his trial in Florida over classified documents has been postponed indefinitely. It seems the complexities of legal wrangling over classified evidence have bought him some time. Lastly, let's take a nostalgic trip to Australia, where a retired mechanic has turned back the clock on a 1948 Leyland OPD two double decker bus. After 40 years of dedication, the bus is now catching the eye of the Sydney Bus Museum, hoping to make it a star exhibit. So, buckle up for a journey through today's news landscape, and please stay tuned for more detailed content. In a bold move that has captured headlines across the globe, TikTok, the wildly popular video sharing app known for its viral dance routines and comedic skits, has taken legal action against the US government. This lawsuit, as detailed by Bloomberg, challenges a new law that presents a stark ultimatum to TikTok's parent company, ByteDance, sell the app or face a ban in the United States. The law has ignited a firestorm of debate, with TikTok arguing that it infringes on free speech rights and threatens the livelihoods of creators and small businesses that have found a home on the platform. This legal battle is not just about a social media app, it's a confrontation that could redefine the boundaries of digital expression and international business relations. Adding a layer of geopolitical intrigue, Chinese leader Xi Jinping's recent journey to Eastern Europe has cast a spotlight on the region's fractured stance towards the US. During his visit, she made a poignant reference to the 1999 NATO bombing of the Chinese embassy in Serbia, a historical wound that remains sensitive. This statement was seen as a veiled critique of the West's dominance in global affairs and a signal of China's growing assertiveness on the world stage. The timing of Xi's comments, amidst the TikTok lawsuit, underscores the complex web of technological, political, and economic tensions that define the current US-China relationship. Meanwhile, the Australian Broadcasting Corporation reports that TikTok's lawsuit brands the US government's actions as obviously unconstitutional, accusing it of leveraging national security concerns as a pretext to circumvent the First Amendment. This legal challenge is a high-stakes gambit by TikTok and ByteDance to protect their interests and push back against what they perceive as an unwarranted vilification by the US government. The outcome of this lawsuit could set a precedent for how tech companies are regulated and scrutinized on the basis of national security. In another twist of legal drama, The Washington Post brings to light the indefinite postponement of former US President Donald Trump's trial in Florida over alleged mishandling of classified documents. This delay introduces a new layer of uncertainty into Trump's legal entanglements, with the postponement likely pushing any potential trial beyond the November election. This development is significant, as Trump is the first former president to face criminal charges, marking an unprecedented moment in American legal and political history. The complexity of the case, particularly the challenges related to the use of classified evidence, has proven to be a formidable obstacle to setting a trial date, underscoring the intricate balance between national security interests and legal proceedings. As these stories unfold, from the courtrooms of the US to the diplomatic corridors of Eastern Europe, they reveal the multifaceted nature of the challenges facing today's global leaders and businesses. Whether it's the future of TikTok in the US, the evolving dynamics of US-China relations, or the legal woes of a former president, these developments speak to the broader themes of freedom, power, and justice in an increasingly interconnected and digitized world. As we continue to navigate these complex waters, one thing is clear, the outcomes of these disputes will have far-reaching implications, not just for the parties involved, but for the global community at large. In the quaint town of Warchope, Australia, a retired mechanic named Brian Mantle has devoted nearly four decades of his life to an extraordinary project. The Australian Broadcasting Corporation reports on Mantle's painstaking restoration of a 1948 Leyland OPD two double-decker bus, a vehicle that once ferried migrants to the Port Kembla steelworks, playing a crucial role in the region's industrial history. Acquiring the bus in 1983, 
Mantle embarked on a journey to bring this piece of transportation history back to life, sourcing parts and materials from across the globe to restore the bus to a roadworthy condition. His dedication has not gone unnoticed, the Sydney Bus Museum is now actively fundraising to acquire this unique vehicle for its collection. The museum recognises the bus as the only surviving example of its model, making it a significant artefact of the region's transport heritage. Switching gears to geopolitics, Nikkei Asia sheds light on the evolving dynamics of international alliances in the Indo-Pacific region. The United States, Japan, Australia, and the Philippines have formed an emerging quadrilateral group, colloquially known as the Squad. This alliance has rapidly become a cornerstone of Washington's foreign security policy in the Indo-Pacific, surpassing the importance of the Quad, comprising the US, Japan, India, and Australia, in the context of militarized crises and conflicts with China. This shift in priorities comes amid escalating tensions in the South China Sea, where Chinese forces have engaged in aggressive actions against Philippine supply ships. The formation of the squad and the strengthening of the US-Japan alliance signal a strategic realignment, emphasizing the importance of these partnerships in countering China's assertive posture in the region. Meanwhile, on the economic front, foreign policy explores the potential implications of Donald Trump's return to the White House, particularly concerning trade policies. Trump's previous tenure was marked by aggressive trade measures, including the imposition of tariffs on imports, which could see a resurgence if he were to assume office again. Experts cited in the article predict the reintroduction of tariffs, such as a 10% tax on imports from all countries and a staggering 60% tax on Chinese goods. Additionally, there could be intensified restrictions on technology exports to China and steps towards decoupling the two economies. Proponents of these policies argue that higher tariffs would reduce the US trade deficit, compel trade partners to open their markets to US goods, and mitigate the effects of China's industrial overcapacity. However, critics highlight the drawbacks of such measures, noting that tariffs have historically led to higher domestic prices for metals and intermediate goods, diminishing the competitiveness of US companies. Moreover, a revival of Trump's trade policies could hinder the US's ability to unite allies against China and Russia, potentially exacerbating geopolitical tensions in Asia. Each of these stories, from Brian Mantle's dedication to preserving a piece of Australian transport history, to the strategic realignments in the Indo-Pacific, and the possible resurgence of protectionist trade policies in the US, reflects the complex interplay of history, geopolitics, and economics. They underscore the importance of understanding past and present to navigate the future, whether it's through the restoration of a vintage bus, the formation of strategic alliances, or the implications of trade policies on global relations. In the intricate and often tumultuous world of American politics, recent developments have once again thrust former President Donald Trump into the spotlight, revealing the complex interplay of legal challenges and political endorsements that continue to shape the US political landscape. From the courtroom to the court of public opinion, the narratives surrounding Trump are as varied as they are controversial. In a report by Yahoo US, the legal saga involving Donald Trump and Stormy Daniels, a porn star who has claimed to have had a sexual encounter with Trump, has taken a dramatic turn. Daniels' detailed testimony about her encounter with Trump has sent ripples through the defense's strategy, potentially undermining their position. The crux of the matter lies in Trump's denial of the encounter, a stance that legal experts believe might have been a tactical misstep. According to MSNBC columnist Glenn Keshner, Trump's attorneys might have been better off acknowledging some level of interaction between Trump and Daniels to pivot the focus onto whether a crime was indeed committed. This legal battle is further complicated by efforts from Trump's defense team to cast doubt on Daniels' motives. The New York Times highlighted that the defense might leverage text messages between Daniels and her publicist, suggesting that Daniels was primarily motivated by the financial gain from staying silent about the alleged affair. The legal intricacies of Trump's situation are mirrored by the complexities of his political standing, as evidenced by former House Speaker Paul Ryan's recent statements. In a conversation with Yahoo Finance, Ryan unequivocally stated his intention to vote for a Republican candidate other than Donald Trump in the upcoming November elections. Citing character as a crucial criterion for presidential leadership, Ryan articulated his concerns about Trump's suitability for the role, pointing to potential negative impacts on NATO, international alliances, Europe, and trade. 
Ryan's stance is emblematic of a broader reluctance among some former cabinet members and high-profile Republicans to endorse Trump's candidacy. This reluctance, as Ryan suggests, stems from a perception of disfavor and a sense of finality regarding Trump's political journey. Trump's response to such critiques has been characteristically combative, particularly in his criticisms of Ryan's leadership. The juxtaposition of these stories, from Yahoo US, paints a vivid picture of the challenges and controversies that continue to surround Donald Trump. On one hand, his legal entanglements with figures like Stormy Daniels expose the personal and potentially unlawful dimensions of his past, raising questions about the implications for his political future. On the other hand, the political dynamics highlighted by Paul Ryan's refusal to support Trump underscore the deep divisions within the Republican Party and the broader American political sphere. These narratives, rich with detail and emblematic of the enduring complexities of Trump's legacy, offer a glimpse into the ongoing debates and discussions that will undoubtedly shape the US political landscape in the years to come. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO Brief via email.